took a phone call from the wife while I was driving home. She was super excited, almost having trouble getting the words out. She said a neighbor had just thrown out one of those old five foot satellite dishes and I should swing by there and ask if we can have it. I don't know, I said. Do we really want to be taking home other people's trash? What you're about to see here is a short video of my daughter and I turning an old satellite dish into a solar cooker. Now I realize this is likely common knowledge, but allow me a moment to give a very quick explanation. Satellite dish is the common name we give to parabolic antennas. They're used to receive low power electromagnetic signals from transmitters, usually satellites. The parabolic shape reflects the weak signal to its focal point. Think of it like a magnifying glass. It takes in a lot of signal over a big area and concentrates it down to a small point. At the focal point is the receiver actually the feed horn. There your coax cable takes the now higher signal and brings it inside. The dish is a section of a paraboloid, like if you took a parabola and spun it 360 degrees. Any section would work, but usually a low section that keeps the satellite dish more or less vertical tends to be more practical. This way you don't need the space to point your dish maybe straight up into the sky, or have it collect rainwater and snow usually falls off on its own. The bigger the dish, the more signal you'd collect. Now dishes these days have gotten a lot smaller than they used to be because the frequencies used are much higher. Higher frequency equals smaller dish. Since we're interested in collecting sunlight, a bigger dish is more bang for the buck. And that is why my wife was so excited. Another thing to keep in mind is that transmitters are usually static. In the case of satellites, they'd be geosynchronous. That means they're up in the sky, but they don't move relative to the ground. They're spinning just as fast as the Earth is. That way, the dish on the side of your house doesn't need to move. Now, some of them do have motors to allow you to point to different satellites, but once locked on, they don't need to move. Now, I'm not an electrical engineer, at least not after what I did to poor Bob down at the power station, but that's the gist of it. Satellite dishes are designed to reflect radio waves, essentially, and not light. So in order to get our dish to concentrate heat from the sun, we need to make the surface reflective to light. You wouldn't cook very much using the satellite signal on its own. Also, as you may or may not have noticed, the sun tends to move. This makes parabolic cookers a tad problematic. You're cooking your beans one minute, and the next, your neighbor's house might be up in flames. But as far as my kid and I are concerned, it's a fun science project. As it turns out, getting flat tape onto a parabolic surface ain't so easy. Correction. It's not hard, but requires more patience than I'd budgeted for. We started off strong, relatively consistent, but by the time we got to the end, it was a free-for-all and everyone just wanted it over with. For reasons that remain a mystery to this day, my wife and daughter enjoy strong mint, I guess maybe menthol, chewing gum. My boy just stole a piece from his sister. And in three, two... So first things first, we had to test it out. Two things became evident very quickly. One, this thing can do some serious damage and fast. Two, four-year-olds can't handle this kind of power. The next day, without her brother around, my daughter asked we try again. On our way out the door, I spotted the coffee pot, and at the time, seemed like a reasonable thing to try. What you're seeing here is me trying to focus the dish on the bottom of the pot. It's a bit windy, and I'm wrestling with some 2x4s behind the dish trying to prop it into position. My daughter is the lookout. She's having a blast trying to help me find the focal point. Turned out for the best though, as I think this is when the whole hottest at the focal point concept really started to sink in for her. She started giving me aiming instructions based on how fast her stick would light. Then of course it was my turn. The cover story was me checking and updating the tracking of the dish, but really I was just burning stuff. I'm still impressed by how fast it put fire to that old plank. We have a big barrel of rainwater behind us here. It's for the garden. She's run off to put her fire out. If we do some quick, probably not 100% accurate math here, Let's see what we come up with in terms of power for this thing. On a good day, I think the official number from the sun is 1,000 watts per square meter. Don't quote me on that, but that's what comes to mind. 
That's how much energy we get on the surface of the Earth from the sun. This is mid-November, about 2 in the afternoon, with a clear blue sky. Let's knock that down to, say, 800 watts per square meter. Again, totally shooting from the hip here. The satellite dish is 5 feet in diameter, so that makes it almost 20 square feet. 20 square feet is almost 2 square meters. At 800 watts per square meter, we're looking at 1,600 watts at the coffee pot. Now, that's likely very optimistic. I don't know how much my dish is actually reflecting, and the fact that the coffee pot is shiny uh, doesn't really help out here. That said, I can tell you it took about twice as long to make this coffee than it would have on a gas stove. I mean, I didn't time it, but it didn't feel like forever, which, technically speaking, would be four times as long. I don't endorse kids under 12 drinking coffee, but she asked, and feels like we went through a lot to get to this point. Maybe I should have roasted marshmallows instead. Might have been smarter. That, and I knew that after just one sip, she wouldn't be trying coffee again till she's at least 30. 